Hello and welcome to this latest edition of the Virtual Bridge Sessions. Uh, and I'm joined today by, by Heather from the SQA. Hello. Hi, I, hi. You know, this this might actually be our first SQA uh, Virtual Bridge session. Ooh, like, oh, fun. so <laughs> you'll be setting the standard. That's it. I mean, you know, and I'm expecting great things. <laughs> especially on the subject of meta skills today. Now, meta skills yeah. is, is interesting. This, this, this concept of soft skills has been around for a while. So I am especially keen to hear this latest take um, on the SDS uh, idea of, of meta skills um, and what SQA is doing to, to help us learn more. So without further ado, over to you, Heather. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kenji. So let me just, um, yeah, share my screen. So hello everybody, uh, as Kenji says, my name's Heather. I work as a digital services manager uh, at SQA. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about meta skills today and how we're approaching it uh, for our qualification development. So as Kenji says, it's, it's not something that's new uh, and I'm sure you've all got experience of meta skills, thoughts about meta skills, and I'm really looking forward to discussing those with you. So, just to give you, let me just see if I can move on. There we are. So, just to give you a quick uh, overview of what I'm covering today, talking about why, why meta skills, why not something else. Um, just to give you an update of where we are with our development of the next generation of qualifications. Talking a little bit about what meta skills are, or you know, how we are interpreting meta skills and why we're wanting to include them in our qualifications. Thinking about what we can learn from and what we're doing to support meta skills with e-learning. So first off, why meta skills? Well, as Probably many of you are aware the Future Skills Mission uh, from Scottish Government highlights meta skills as being uh, really important for the workers of the future. SQ have been doing quite a lot of work uh, with SDS, Skills Development Scotland, on meta skills and how we can embed them in our qualifications. We also have our qualifications managers um, who do a lot of sector engagement with their different sectors um, and really in their discussions it's come out as something that's really important uh, to build into our qualifications. So uh, the project that I'm working on, uh, the next generation of um, HNC, HND, HN Next Gen, um, we're currently at the prototyping stage so we're busy figuring out how meta skills will fit within our qualifications. Um, we have three areas that we're working on at the moment. So they're business, media and engineering. And we're hoping to go to pilot next September. So some of the features of this next generation of qualifications um, are reduced assessment. So thinking about things like holistic grading to make sure that there's uh, increased time for teaching and learning. Meta skills is a key feature of the development. Uh, we want larger and fewer units of learning and uh, technology is going to be really at the center of delivery of the qualification. So what are meta skills? Well, um, as I mentioned earlier, we've been doing a lot of work with SDS and they've done quite a bit of research into meta skills and have come up with this framework that you're probably all familiar with. And um, so there are three main categories for the meta skills, self-management, social intelligence and innovation. And then within those, uh, each have four meta skills uh, that form part of it. So how they're balanced within the qualifications might look a little bit different between the different qualifications, um, but you know, they're, they're all important skills that, uh, that our learners are developing. So in terms of our aims for meta skills within the qualifications, um, it's really important to us that they actually mean something, um, that you can see them, that um, 
that they're valuable to the learners. So um, why we want to include them? Well, um, you know, as I said earlier, the Future Skills mission highlighted the importance of these soft skills, 21st century skills, meta skills, whatever you want to call them, will look a little bit different, but um, yeah, it's, they're just really important for developing the workforce of the future. Uh, it's really important that learners, when they move into the workplace, are able to reflect on their work and, you know, so like figuring out how they could do things, improve things uh, for next time. Um, we really want to give them the tools to be able to articulate that self-reflection, so in interviews or reviews or just in their day-to-day -day work. And really it underpins other aspects of the qualifications too. So the academic or vocational aspect of qualifications. So obviously there are lots and lots of different models for, um, for um, meta skills around the world, different countries doing lots of different things. Um, but looking at our local and direct experience that we're learning from when we're thinking about integrating meta skills into our qualifications, um, these include the skills units, so both the design and the student and lecturer experience. Um, we also have um, work that we're doing. So for example, our pilot with SBS on uh, work-based learning and also um, work around the modern apprenticeships too. So, in terms of all the different aspects um, that we have when developing uh, meta skills, here are lots of the different things that we're taking into account when we're considering how we integrate them uh, into our qualifications. So, making sure that there's a shared language, a shared understanding of meta skills, thinking about how they, uh, the learners can do self assessment, uh, things like peer assessment as well encouraging language so that they can really set goals and plan towards those, um, that they feel confident in experimenting and researching and, and really asking questions. Um, we're also thinking about how they can give and receive feedback and make changes and, and evaluate things and really move things forward. So, those are some of the things that we're considering when we're thinking about how we can develop meta skills. So some core concepts that um, we have as part of our qualifications. So it's, it's really important that they are meaningful for the learners, um, that they are um, individualistic. So they, they work well for the individual um, and that they have some sort of context that they aren't just a sort of separate thing that you do on the side. So it's about encouraging self-reflection and awareness, helping goal setting and planning. And, and really it's quite important that it isn't just a tick box exercise. Um, so it needs to really encourage true self-reflection. Um, so it also hopefully meta skills will encourage different approaches like coaching and mentoring alongside perhaps more traditional teaching and learning uh, ways of working. I think it's important um, that the meta skills is an active thing, uh, isn't just something that happens, it's something that has to be really actively developed. So um, how are we thinking about how we can support the understanding of meta skills uh, within this context? Well, something that's really apparent to us is that we're going to need to provide really clear guidance in the documentation that we're providing along with the qualifications. Um, we're hoping to do some awareness raising through e-learning and I'll talk about that in a minute. And we're also considering how we can support it through professional development too. So uh, we are in the process of creating an e-learning course for meta skills. 
Um, it's currently out for review by different learners and we've got some good feedback so far. So why have we done this? Well, we want to make it available to all students. Um, it's useful having an e-learning course because you know, students can work on it at their own speed, their own time that fits in with the, you know, the, the other things that they have going on and they can obviously access at any time. And it also ensures that they're receiving a consistent message about meta skills um, that is aligning with, with what we're working on within the qualifications too. So um, in terms of the shape or structure of the e-learning, we've got reflective practice um, at the centre. Um, and, and that's something that's woven throughout the different blocks of uh, learning. Uh, so the, the, um, then we have the other uh, categories of uh, meta skills um, that the uh, students can work through. So uh, the first unit that they'll come across uh, explains meta skills and also runs through some reflective practice strategies um, that the students can work on. Uh, then after they've worked through that first learning block and um, there's optionality for which skills they want to learn about. So there might be some in particular that they're focusing on that they can learn about so they don't have to work through them all. Um, it uses a variety of real world examples and different media too. And then the reflection points are brought in for each skill. So each student is encouraged to create a reflection log or journal and to really think about uh, examples from their experience for the skill that they've been learning about. Um, and for each one, they're encouraged to think about what they did, why they didn't, how they would do things differently in the future. So I've actually whizzed through that, <laughs> but um, did anybody have any questions about, uh, about how we're approaching things? I'm sure you've all got lots of different experiences and ideas about meta skills. Right? Uh, yeah, thank you, Sarah. Um, I'm just gonna uh, just uh, obviously about dates, etc. When are you hoping to do the rollout for this? For when's going to go live for students? So um, the HNC, so the pilot is um, in September 2021, um, and that will be for a small number of uh, colleges. Um, and then I believe that the rollout would then be begin the following year. For those okay, three 2022, areas. then okay. 20. Yeah. And will, will colleges have a um, 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 stat view of this um, beforehand, even if it's not actually live, the pilot's not live for students? Yes, yeah, so um, we're doing a lot of engagement at the moment with, um, as part of our QDTs, um, with lots of different colleges and centres. So there's a lot of input from now, from the prototyping stage. Okay, so just, just to those on the QDT, okay. Yeah. And Heather, um, this, this course that you're developing specifically for students around meta skills, um, when, when do you see that being released? So we're hoping in the next couple of months, we're really, yeah, hoping to begin to raise awareness. So it's not linked directly to the qualification, it's just to, you know, it will be available to all students. But yeah, hopefully in the uh, in the in the new year. <laughs> so one of the things um, I remember seeing uh, at West College Scotland, there was an initiative there where they talked about the need for students, and you've highlighted this in your presentations, to be able to articulate the skills that they're gaining, specifically in this case, meta skills. But you know whether it is uh, around. Um, curriculum for excellence or, or, or four C's, however you couch it. So explicitly, can you give us an idea of how you help students articulate to prospective employers the skills that they've gained? What, what kind of approaches are you employing? Mm -hmm. um, so 
we're we're hoping that um be sort of coaching and mentoring approaches so the idea will be that throughout the course they are continuously discussing meta skills so that then they have that language that they'll be able to um to show you know through star or, or whatever uh, you have in in in, uh, in interviews now um the yeah the language around meta skills being able to reflect on, on what they've worked on um but some of that you know we're we're obviously very aware that different colleges will want to take different approaches so it there probably will end up being a bit of a kind of localized um a localized way of delivering meta skills too so yeah that answers your question <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I think I think that's always the 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 challenge. I suppose it's to make sure that we, um, as as educators, but also employers and industry, are are sharing the same language when they're describing these skills, so mm -hmm. that people can actually articulate what it is they've learned and mm -hmm. and and make that evident. That's that's always going to be um, a bit of a challenge. Um, yeah. Okay, so um, does does anyone else have a question for for Heather? Um, I yeah, see sorry, I, I had my, I oh, had sorry. my hand up there. Oh, you did, <laughs> you did I, virtually, I, I, and I didn't I, notice. I, sorry, that's okay. <laughs> Hi, um, my name is Phil Storier. Um, I've recently just moved down to Dumfries and Galloway College as director of uh, student experience uh, and academic performance. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in the e-learning e course. That was something that I had suggested was a big thing that we, we, we should be doing as a, a kind of extra offer alongside kind of mainstream courses was allowing students the opportunity to develop those um, kind of broader skills that they might need. You know, I think that, that some of the skills that students really need is, is actually just about kind of active participation, both in their studies, but just in life at large. Um, so, so at a kind of HN level, I could see that working fairly well. Is that firstly, is the learning modules, the online course, is, do you think that's going to be appropriate for, for all levels? You know, I suppose one thing I'm conscious of is kind of level four students, level five students transitioning from school into college. And one thing we've been thinking about is actually we need to, to do more onboarding with them to prepare mm -hmm. them for that starting of, you know, so that on day one when they come in, there's enough for them to take on. And how mm -hmm. do we maybe work with schools to develop those skills in advance or where's the crossover or, you know, at what sort of level would you see it sitting? So I suppose I'm interested in how do we use the, maybe this course as a bit of a, a bridging activity or a, a kind of onboarding activity and what sort of levels you think it would be suitable for? Yeah, I, th I, th I think that it, it, it would be suitable for that level. We've tried to make it pretty accessible, to be honest. Um, and it's um, it's very much an introduction. So it's not saying that it covers all of meta skills by any stretch of the imagination, but it's more just to get to raise awareness and to get the, the, the language out there so that, you know, they're aware of what meta skills are and what the different skills are. So, yeah, I, I would say that it probably would be appropriate, but... Yeah, I'm happy to, um, you know, uh, I'll share my details uh, with Kenji and, you know, if, if you want to um, get in touch about that, I'm happy to um, send out the, the kind of first draft of them people. Yeah, that, 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 that would be excellent. Um, just another wee, wee point, if I, if I could. Um, I've come, my role just now, but I've come from a, a curriculum management role and in, in my previous role, I was quite big on, actually certainly at lower levels moving away from wholly vocational timetabling i not you know I, I manage kind of sports areas and things like that and i had actually started inputting kind of half days of learning and one of those half days was actually just about um, meta skill development mm -hmm. um, so it was actually in the timetable so not that the students had to know too much about it but the thinking behind it was well actually you know, when we're thinking about meta skills, this is about preparing students for just the world at large, I think. And if, if what we're being told is right about these, you know, different jobs throughout their life. So actually, I was thinking, well, if I'm at level four or level five solely studying sport, firstly, what chance have I got? I'm going to articulate all the way through the qualifications that I need. Um, so we started to move that out. Um but what I found is kind of looking through the units for that. So we started putting in kind of project units, essential skills units and things like that, which were fine. Um, but what we found worked really well for that stuff was just the project-based learning approaches. So chopping up all those units just into one big project across the year. 
-hmm. and we didn't actually spend too much time discussing it with students. We kind of, you know, had ideas and and opportunities for them to reflect and, you know, uh, identify those meta skills. But what we found was that they were actually just developing a lot of those skills. And so probably the main bit for me was then, yeah, what maybe needs a bit of guidance is innovative ways to, to, to explore how the students um, explain those skills and recognize them without maybe overloading them with the information as they're doing it and it was more at, at the end point so you know it was just to share that that I'm, I'm kind of on board with the meta skills stuff I think we just have to be clever with how we integrate it and maybe think differently about how we apply it but mm-hmm. maybe it becomes more you know uh, broad level courses if you like mm-hmm. that's 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 really interesting that's great thank you Excellent points. And uh, Paul, you had a question. Thanks, Kenji. Um, thanks, Heather, uh, for your, your interesting presentation. And absolutely agree with um, basically what you were saying there and some, some of the other participants around um, building awareness in a common language. I think that's critical. I just wondered if sort of following from that and something that we've discussed within our college, which is around how do you, how do you know that you've developed both as an individual, but also as a, a stakeholder, so as an employer or a college, a particular meta skill or a group of meta skills. So where you can recognise and say, well, I've, I've used or utilised this type of skill. Have you thought mm-hmm. about how to how people would identify that they've developed that skill or, or yeah. improved that skill or equipped themselves with that skill? This seems like a this seems like a perfect question for SQA, Heather. I mean, all around <laughs> assessment. How, how do we assess and benchmark our yeah. meta skills? They're, they're obviously quite nebulous. Some are interesting. Yeah. You know, you look at something like resilience, where there's almost a sort of sort of failure needs to be inbuilt to 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 be yeah. to build your resilience, critical thinking. I was just really interested to to see if you've had that conversation or started it. Yeah. So so we we are we are having conversations around that definitely. Um, I would say from that that context becomes key and kind of how um how learners are, are evidencing what they're learning um and through that you would see the progression especially if you're using those kind of coaching and, and mentoring approaches i think um you know and they're able to articulate you know as as we said you know they're able to articulate and discuss how how they're changing um, yeah. you know how they would um how you know how they would do things differently I think I think that that's really where you're going to see the progress Um, but yeah it's definitely something that we're exploring as part of the prototyping so yeah maybe uh, maybe ask me again in a year (laughs) (laughs) when we've uh, you know when we've when we've got the prototyping I I, I think that, that that creating the right sort of projects where they're able to showcase the skills um, and and um, talk about it in a meaningful, contextualised way will be the most important thing. Thanks. Okay. Uh, do we have any any other questions? And and while you're thinking of that, um, I'm I'm intrigued by so meta skills is almost an evolution of of that conversation around soft skills, and and I suppose the most visible thing is that compared to previous frameworks, 4Cs and et cetera, um, we've seen an expansion of the language within that framework, covering a lot of uh, points. But Heather, how, how do you see um, meta skills as having been evolved from these other frameworks? What's, what's coming to the fore? What's new? Mm, that's, a, that's a good question. I mean, I guess... Um, What what's probably new, new is well is anything ever really new, um, but I guess what's new for us is is the articulation of it, is the evidence of it. You know, we're, we're really keen for it not to become a, a tick box exercise that it is actually meaningful and not just something that you know you find out that you've got at the end oh I've got uh, you know I'm innovative or whatever um so yeah I think in terms of us that's what's what's new um but in terms of all of meta skills 
I don't know. I mean, there's, there's so many different interpretations. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so, uh, anyone else have uh, a question? Sorry, sorry. Can I... Yeah, I am. Um, hi, I'm Nicola Stewardson from SDS. Oh, hi. Um, and I'm really interested. Hi, sorry, I've got another meeting. I know this meeting is finishing at half past, but I was, I'm really interested to find out um, in relation to the, um, the e learning course that you're. Um, that you're developing. I'm just interested to find out whether or not there is any discussion within that about, um, so while you're de developing your meta skills, are you can also considering your career management skills? And there's any um, discussion about the, the link or um, whether there is a link between those two things or how you could be um, developing your career management skills whilst you're also developing your meta skills and just whether there's any mention of that within the course or do you think there would be any if any benefit in doing that I suppose yeah that, that's a good question so um what so in the in the uh, learning block about um self-reflection um, it's, it's made explicit that um, being able to reflect on, on how you're doing and, and things is, is really important in terms of, you know, future working, um, things like uh, interviews and reviews and things. But in, in terms of, you know, um, managing your career, that, that isn't the, the central focus of it is to kind of just talk about meta skills and raise awareness around that rather than um, kind of becoming uh, much larger but it's definitely a, a, an interesting thing to explore okay and i i think we have time for perhaps just one last question if someone has something to pose and i i edit out all of these embarrassing long pauses as well so you know, <laughs> <laughs> the only person that gets to see them is people here in, in the session but uh ed, any last question uh for Heather, before I have to think of one. <laughs> oh, you know, it's half past now. So, <laughs> so what, one of the things, um, just talking about benchmarking these skills, I think it, it's difficult to come up with specific uh, targets that you're expecting a learner to reach. So I, I have seen in some of our colleges where people encourage progression. So identifying where they are now and then recognizing that they're improving um, from where they were to where they, they want to get at the end of a course. And I think, I think as long as you're able to measure some form of progression in your meta skills, then th that, that really ultimately should be a good target to have, I suspect. Yeah, I, I would agree. I think, um, you know, as, as I said before, it's, it's very individualistic um, and, context specific is kind of what's important. And I think to try and create a level would be, um, you know, perhaps um, not necessarily best, best serving um, each individual. So yeah, I think um, being able to show, show how you're progressing, and what difference you're making, what changes you're making, I, I think that that's the most important thing, yeah. Okay, that's brilliant. Okay, thank you very much for that, Heather. Um, unfortunately, that's all we have time for in this recorded part of the Virtual Bridge session. Um, but thank you, everyone, for joining us. And until we see you next time um, at some future session, um, please stay safe.